Let's listen to portions of President Ekufuado's address last night. Constitutional and statutory bodies such as the Electoral Commission, the National Commission for Civic Education, and the National Identification Authority, whose activities were exempted from the outset from these restrictions, must conduct their activities in accordance with social distancing and the necessary hygiene and safety protocols. Whilst we step up public education of the protocols and public gatherings, let me also state that regulatory agencies will undertake random checks to ensure conformity with these rules, and the security services will be tasked to enforce them. I'm calling upon the Ministry of Information, the National Commission for Civic Education, and the media to intensify public education of these protocols and directions. I entreat all religious traditional, community and opinion leaders to continue to partner with government in engaging, mobilizing, and enforcing adherence to social distancing and personal hygiene practices in their respective communities. You're on News 360. Alessna, welcome. Dr. Emmanuel Akwiti, he's executive director of IDEG, and Doc is on Zoom, so let's speak to him right away. Good evening, Doc, and uh, thank you for agreeing to speak to us on News 360. Thank you, too. I'm welcome. You're welcome. Right. So, uh, first, is, is the call by the president to the EC, NIA, and SECE to get to work. Some have raised concerns. How do you react to this call? Um, well, first of all, I think it's important that um, some restrictions have been lifted um, so that we can gradually regularize life. But this is an election year, and it's elections taking place in a COVID-19 context. Uh, there are health issues, considerable anxiety. People are afraid what will happen to them, apart from the economic consequences and whether uh, at some point, uh, we are all not coming back into another wave, given the fact that, well, now it's not so uh, uh, serious, given it's not so dangerous in terms of the rate it's rising. We, we are around 8,000 plus. But elections brings around millions of people, okay? And therefore, I think part of the reasons why compiling a general register rather than a limited one uh, is the question of how long are people going to stay uh, in the open space? The physical uh, contact, whether it's soci uh, you know, social distancing or physical distancing, being out in the open for long hours. Registration uh, doesn't go as smoothly as we think. From all the elections we have, various issues occur. It differs from one queue to the other and depends on the area. Um, so if you come to... Uh, East Ligon or Laboni or middle class areas, you find out that everything goes smoothly. If you move to where larger populations dwell in very dense areas, it's a different kind of game. And you tend to see that the distances do not work. Um, there are queues, there are pushes here and there, and so on and so forth. So it's a complex thing for us to universalize and think that social distancing is going to work along, uh, you know, perfectly everywhere. That is not the story of registration okay. or voting. And okay. that raises the concern that uh, the numbers involved are huge. A large number of people could be exposed uh, in the very spaces that we've been told we have to be very careful and, and rather spend little time and retreat. Right. So, so Doc, th th there's a lot of mixed feelings about whether the election should be held at all. Particularly, the NDC says it will employ every legitimate means to stop the EC's attempt to foist on Ghanaians a needless and wasteful voters register. 
that is intended to disenfranchise millions of eligible voters. I mean, mostly NDC strongholds. You know, is the EC in a position to do this? Uh, in a position to do what? To disenfranchise? No, in a position to organize a, a, a new voters' register. I'm looking at the circumstances. Uh, well, we, we have said that because of the COVID context, um, first of all, and the exposure to the health hazards, okay, because you're talking about approximately 17 million people. That's a huge number. And you are now issuing uh, registering, cards are being issued. Uh, after the registration, I think there'll be a time to validate. Maybe validation sometimes is done by phone, but not all the 17 would come out. And then you have the election day issues too. And so in that case, you know, you're looking at the exposure to a health risk, the virus, and the fact that the behavior varies from place to place. And therefore we cannot universalize that every Ghanaian is going to behave the same way and so on and so forth. And so the health risk is there, is there, and that worries people. Mm. Uh, but that's, we have options too. I mean, uh, the new register that the EC uh, will compile uh, would not have a higher degree of integrity as the existing one in certain areas. For example, we, are, we still don't have a Ghana card for more than half of the projected uh, uh, electorate. And so you've heard about passports, there's a case in court, and so on and so forth. And that has been the case with all registers. As soon as you introduce different uh, uh, ID cards, you get into trouble. Okay, so the Ghana card is so fundamental that one ID card everybody has is what we should all use. That's not ready. It could get ready probably next year. And, and that is important. Uh, the has also been the issue of bloated register. But how do you determine bloatedness when you don't know the size of your population? Fortunately, this is a census year, okay? And we understand that, well, COVID has delayed processes, but uh, maybe September or thereabouts, the census will begin. And so if you project by next year, you could also have census. So you have a card, you have census. Then the third is that this register and the way we're approaching it, we cannot differentiate minors and fingerprints from adults and foreigners and so on. We can't. I think the new system is good in the sense that you will have your facial features as well, and you could have continuous registration and so on. But one of the important things about elections is that uh, political parties are not the only stakeholders. Okay, It involves the electorate. After, after all, the parties are organized to, to ask for us to vote for them. And so the voices that are coming uh, or that are, are cautioning us against the compilation of, of a new register um, are diverse now, not just the civil society. I think the Empire Institute captures the variety. But what are they saying? You need to build consensus. We need to pursue the path of collaboration because any time disagreement between the parties makes the EC be perceived as be either a hostage of, you know, parties in government tend to defend the EC. I mean, both parties do. Or you see it, another party opposed to them. It creates a very difficult situation because the EC's registration exercise needs the collaboration of the parties. The education okay. hasn't gone far. Mm -hmm. The parties would have to mobilize their members out. In 2008, when there were disagreements like this, we ended up with a more serious bloated register and a very greatly disrupted process. Okay. And that all affected, right. you know, okay. the integrity of the register and all that. So all right. we must find the path to, uh, you know, consensus. We can combine a very new registration. Why don't we confi confine the limited, the machine, the new equipment to the limited registration, which okay. minimizes exposure because it's about only 1.5 or so. All right. So I'm, I'm sure that this is a long conversation. We may need to find time to discuss this thing again because it is in the interest of Ghana that we have a voters register that can satisfy at least about I mean I mean all, all the political parties and the stakeholders. Thank you very much. Dr. Emmanuel Akwiti, executive director of IDE. We're grateful for your insight into this issue.